Hello, this is your instructor, Ashley Bell, and right now we're going to look at chapter 1.7, which is on scale and proportion. So what is scale? Scale is the overall um, size of an object, and that is it, knowing if the scale is large or small is by comparing it to another. So let's look at an example. Here we have a really kind of humorous artwork by Oldenburg. So we can tell that the matches are enormous, um, that that scale is, is large. It's well beyond the traditional, you know, matches fitting in your hand. Um, how do we do that? You know, how do we come to that conclusion? Well, it's because we can, we are comparing the object, which is the sculpture, to another object. And that object could be the building. It could be, if there were cars, it could be the people. All of those things let us know that the sculpture is, again, it's enormous. Um, and that's what the artists, you know, they like to take um, something small and then enlarge the scale of it because they think that's kind of a fun thing to do. All right, so now we're going to look at hierarchical scaling. And that's when, like in this relief, the figure that's the largest is the most important person in this story. And then the medium, they're somewhat important, and then the smaller people are less important. And that's just all that higher for scaling is. Now let's look at proportion. That's when you have one object and you're comparing the parts of it to each other to know if it looks like it's proportional or it's not proportional. So let's go ahead and we're going to look at this. The Egyptians, they really wanted to have their sculptures of figures, the people, to be proportional. So they figured out a way of measuring, and they thought if we measure someone's uh, palms, then, you know, for the average man, they will be 24 palms tall. And that's not just anyone's palm. It has to be the person that they're drawing. So, um, and the Greeks would do something similar, except for they would say head height. So you'd measure one person's head and then count how many of their head, the height, the, the height of that head, that's how many times tall. And usually for a man, it would be seven to eight heads tall. So when we look at this sculpture, um, you know, would we say that it's the figures are proportional? Um, and quickly I have students that will say, no, it's not. Because, you know, when we look at, let's say we're looking at the Virgin Mary, her head is enormous in comparison to the width of her shoulders. You know, um, even when you look at Jesus, even from this viewpoint, we can tell that his, um, the overall size of his head is really large compared to the framework of his body. Another example is this from Nigeria. Um, but they have a symbolic value as to why they have enlarged portions of the body. So, I mean, you can quickly see that the abdomen and the head are larger than what they should be proportionally compared to the arms and the hands and the feet. Um, they saw the head as the mind and the stomach or abdomen as the soul. And so they enlarged it symbolically. Okay, so next what we're going to look at is called the golden section. Um, and as it says, it occurs in many natural objects. And I'll show you examples of that. Um, and then also, it's a, it's a mathematical ratio, which is really unique. Um, and here's what it would look like. It actually creates a spiral. Um, and let's go ahead. We're going to look at an example of this. It's you know, more commonly used um, in photography. A lot of uh, photographers use the golden section um, or they'll use what's called the rule of thirds. And so in this photograph, I just want you to kind of look at it and see where you think the focal point is. And I'm going to show you how the artist used the golden section spiral. So most of us would say the area over here is the focal point because we follow this line and how it curves us back in. But it's interesting because the artist did not put the spiral actually on the face of this, the girl that's sick. Instead, it's just above her. 
And that is so that she's not too much of a focal point, but rather she is an emphasized area, but that we take in everyone in the room. So the Parthenon located in Athens is also an example of the golden section, but in architecture. And we have an illustration of that. So I'm going to talk about the overall width and height of the building, but then even look at these little reliefs. We call these a frieze that are on uh, the very top of the, the Parthenon. So the width, oops, so the width and the height are that of a golden section spiral. And remember, it's mathematical, so it is a set number. And they intentionally used that because they wanted all of their buildings to reflect stability. Um, and, and by doing this ratio, it would do that. And even the little frieze have the same golden section spiral. And as the definition said, you can see it in nature. It's in our solar system, the spiral coming from a hurricane, a sunflower, the way that the seeds are packed in there, that golden section is reflected. It's um, It actually twists, it rotates. You have several golden sections for each kind of row that comes out from the center of the seeds, but this enabled the sunflower to pack as many seeds as it could. Um, and then of course the shells are also really common. Even the bottom of a pine cone, you can see the golden section. So let's look here. In photography, um, like here we have just one figure, and so it's a portrait photograph, and they want us to come, the focal point to be in the face near the eye. And here in the landscape, it works really well. Um, and the focal point is here where this um, gentleman is walking um, over here to the left of the trees. And then artists from the Renaissance used it. We have, um, and this is in your book, The Creation of Adam in the Sistine Chapel. Um, and see how he actually explored using, I think, three golden sections to create the composition for this one painting. Um, and then Raphael, I believe this is a Raphael, looks like his, um, used the golden section as well. And that concludes our chapter.